Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. This is episode 2 of the Clash Manager tutorial series, which is basically a set of videos focused on recreating the outstanding Clash Manager systems found in Hearthstone by using Unity Engine and C Sharp scripts. In the previous video, we have used UI elements to create one card prefab. Inside the UI Manager script, using for loop and get child methods can be beneficial because each card information which has been added on Inspector can be perfectly matched with one UI card game object on the UI canvas. However, as you can see, currently we have only displayed 8 cards in this game. Once there are more than 8 cards, the rest of cards will be out of the screen. And one good idea is adding 10 page feature in our game. Each page will only display at most 8 cards. So there are a lot of things to do in this episode. First of all, we need to edit more cards in the inspector. Then, we need to add UI tags on the bottom of the screen and use c -sharp script to test the page's order. Finally, we will add more codes on UI Manager to achieve. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can choose to skip the first episode and start at this episode. So feel free and check out for yourself. By the way, I have already prepared the text version of this episode. Okay, let's get into it. Now we have opened up Unity. There are only three C Sharp scripts in this project. Card script will only focus on all the information that each card will contain, such as card name, descriptions, sprite, and other gameplay stuff. The collection of cards has been stored inside the card manager script. We can manually edit each card information on Inspector. There are 8 card slots under UI panel. The UI panel has added grid layout group component, which plays its child layout elements in a grid. First of all, let's create another 10 cards on Inspector. In order to save your time, let's speed up this process. Alright, we have completed another 10 cards creations. Since we have 18 cards now, select card slot 7 game object and press command or control D on my keyboard to duplicate several times. If we enter the play mode, it will spawn error on console window because, of course, we did not drag all of the card slots game objects into card slots array on Inspector. Remember, each single card will match with one card slot game object. Alright, let's run our things again. Cool. Each card has been shown on the things view. The next step is to hide the rest of the cards on the screen. In other words, there are at most 8 cards allows to display on UI canvas. To do this, it's super easy. Go back into Unity. Select UI Canvas, right click, go UI, and select Text. Press Anchor Preset button, hold Alt and Shift to snap it to the bottom of the canvas. Text lines are centered. Scale it up. Change the color and front. Adding outline component allows a simple outline effect to our UI text. Go to UI Manager script. The first public is an integer number that is called page. So this integer number will actually track down which page is our currently in. Then create one text variable called page text to hold a reference to the UI text component on our UI text game object. Create one private function called update page. First of all, write page text dot text is equal to page at one to string. The default value is zero, but our first page should be one instead of zero. I also know that calling these functions inside update methods will run in each frame can be pretty taxing on the computer. 
Don't worry, later we will remove these functions inside input.getKeyDown condition and only run once. Let's change the text content to zero and check it out. Drag page text game object into the empty slot. Nice. Go back into Visual Studio. Once we press the keyboard D, we want to turn to the next page. If we press the keyboard A, we want to turn to the last page. When we press the keyboard D, page variable's value will be plus 1. Once we press A, the page value will be minus 1. We can put debug.log to get a value of page variables in our game. However, if you run the things, the result is not looking very nature yet. Because our page will display such as negative number, we ignore the fact that our page value cannot continuously increase. Once the page value is equal to the maximum page number, this value should turn back to 1. Likewise, when the page value is equal to 0, once we press the keyboard A again, the page value should equal to be the maximum page number as well. If you don't know how to write these if statements at the first time, the most direct way to solve this problem for me is to list several conditions on paper. Here is my draft. The left side shows how many cards we have in this game. If there are at most 8 cards, the page maximum number of cards should be 1. Once there are 9 or 16 cards, the maximum page should be 2, etc, etc. So we can try to pick up these two special numbers first. Each page can only display at most 8 cards, so that divided by 8 respectively. Actually, these two answers should be the same value because no matter the card's total number is 9 or 16, the maximum value should always be the same value, 2. In this example, this maximum value should be 1 because the page variable's value starts from 0 and we use greater than or equal to. So we can first write 9 minus 1 and then divide it by 8. The result is 1. 16 minus 1 then divide it by 8. The result is also 1. Using these expressions, we will receive the same result no matter there are 9 cards in this game or 16 cards. In if statements, once the page value is greater than or equal to these expressions, our page number will turn back to 0. Otherwise, the page number will always increase by 1. Likewise, once the page number is less than or equal to 0, the page number should turn into the maximum page number. Otherwise, each time when we press the keyboard A, the page number should minus 1. Save the script and switch back. Now we can focus on the console window and the UI text. Once we press the keyboard D, page number will increase by 1. We have 18 cards which means there are 3 pages in this game. The page variables start from 0. When page value is equal to 2, which means we have reached the last page. When we press the keyboard D again, our page number value return to 0 and the UI text also return to 1. Cool. Now we can try to press keyboard A when we are in the first page. The UI text return to 3 and the page variable's value is set to 2. Nice. Back to Visual Studio, go to update page function. Now we can replace the previous stuff with another one. Our UI page text looks more clean. Now we are going to display all of cards in our page. 
go to display cards functions. If we only want to display first eight cards on UI canvas, we can use if statements to write something looks like this. We list each conditions as well. Then we can write if i is greater than or equal to page multiplied by eight, and i is less than page plus one multiplied by eight, we can display each card. We can move this group inside if statements. For easy to read, I press the plus button on the left side to close the switch statements. Don't forget the else statements. Once the i is matched with these conditions, the rest of cards slot, which is not certified with this condition, should be hidden. We use set active to be false. Call these functions when we turn the page. Additional, don't forget, once we have hidden some card slots, each time when you want to display another card, we have to set active to be true again. So inside if statements, when you want to display cards, set active to be true first. Perfect. Now we can try to test if there are only 15 cards in this game. Change the card slot's number. Then, if we run our thing. Perfect. There are two pages in these games now, which means our UI manager is correct. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we will create search tab UI buttons on both sides and complete their basic functions. You can expect episode 3 to come out in 2-3 to three days. We will complete the script that gets our collection manager. As always, you can download the project from the description below. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There is much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.